Welcome to Property Insight. We're going to look at the Draft Renters' Rights Bill, part one of a series of videos we're going to do. Today's video is going to look at the rights to increase rent and how you market your property for rent in a legally compliant way. My name is Neil Harding. My name is Mark Ashworth. And I'm Steve Mitchell. Steve's a specialist letting agent, so he's going to be able to give us uh, a real insight into um, the mechanics of how, uh, of how the new law may look and may work. So the Draft Renters' Rights Bill has been published, it's being read by Parliament, it's not law, but there's plenty of detail in there now for us to get stuck into and explore. So Steve, there's a particular part of the bill that states that the landlord cannot encourage, invite or accept bidding wars for rent and they cannot accept a higher amount of rent for the property than what has been advertised. And if they are found to be in breach of that law, then they could be fined by the local authority up to £7,000. So not a good idea to be the wrong side of this. What are your thoughts overall from, from the first take on that? Yeah, th this one was really interesting because in, in my business, we don't encourage this whatsoever. We, we think this is, uh, in my humble opinion, a sharp practice. I don't think that it positions yourself well with your customers. We, we distinguish between tenants and customers. We like to view them as customers as opposed to tenants. I think there's a psychological difference. So this, this came as a real surprise. But in my letting agent circles, when you get closer to London, this happens all the time. And the, the rationale that they play to themselves is that they're doing this in the landlord's interest. It's a market price, therefore it's governed by supply and demand. And therefore, if you can get a higher price than what's listed, then, then why wouldn't you? And as a landlord, because I'm both, I'm a letting agent and I'm a, a landlord, I would say that, yeah, it's great having a letting agent. I mean, it happens all the time in the sales market, right? Yeah, for sure. You get gazumping and you get overing, and at the end of the day, it's, it's all about what is in the interest of the seller or the vendor if you're selling or the property owner or landlord if you're renting. But in my markets, uh, we don't do this. We work out with the landlord what is the rent that they want to achieve we advertise the property and we achieve the rent so it's good have we had people come to us to say i'll pay you more i'll pay you more i'll pay you more yes we have but in my book that sometimes smacks of desperation and to me there's always a little bit of a red flag if someone wants that room flat house so desperately that they're prepared to pay more. So that might be a, uh, a personal thing, but at the end of the day, that's, that's a little bit of a red flag for me. So what's likely to happen? Well, the, the honest answer is as we sit here today, we don't really know because the law's not been enacted. But speaking with some of my letting agent friends, the way that they're probably going to deal with this change in the legislation is that they're going to push the rents up because the law as it's potentially going to be rolled out is that you can't accept over but you can accept under yeah so we've done a little bit of testing uh, and it's only one room we're hmo specialists so we we sell rooms and we took a room that initially achieved 790 quid this is in cambridge and we did some marketing and we probably get, uh, if you go onto spare room, if you click on the little analytics bit, you can see how many people are looking at the property, uh, at, the, at the listing, how many people are clicking through to get your telephone number, your contact details. And then from that, we track through how many people were invited for viewing. And so therefore we can work out a ratio of how many people are viewing to how many people uh, actually take the property. So we did this, listing at 790 we were getting and this is cambridge we were getting around about two to three hundred people a day looking literally looking at the listing so that's that's point number one point number two is people that were clicking through 
we were getting between sort of 50 and 80 people a day wanting to get more information about this uh, this room that's, that was available or technically available. So what that says to me is that there's still a good level of demand and people wanting to physically go and see that property at 790. Okay, so that was the rent. We then took that exact same advert, so all the graphics were the same, all the word was the same. The only thing we changed was price. And we put that price up from 790 to 815. When we looked at the stats, we found that the people, number of people looking at the ad, exactly the same. Didn't, didn't make a bearing. But the number of people that eventually came through for viewing was two. Wow. That's a massive difference. Yeah. So, so what does that mean? Well, there's an economic concept called uh, elasticity of demand. So basically, the higher you put the price, what happens to the demand? Because the, the supply is constant. And what that said to us, that there is probably a threshold around about 799 or 800 that says that anyone uh, going over that price may not get the same amount of interest than if it was below that price, if that kind of makes sense. So if you then translate that as a letting agent through to uh, what that means for our clients, well, previously we'd have 80 people to choose from, technically, down to two. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? So that, that's open, uh, open to debate. We, we actually sold the room at 815 and we uh, got someone who we were very comfortable with, but it's, it's about choice and having the ability to take someone that is going to be a good customer that makes sure that the affordability and the fit into the property is, is good. If you've got 80 people to choose from and 80 people want to come for viewing, you're going to have a, a broad spectrum. If you've got two people, you're a lot, a, a lot more narrow. So I think there's going to be some, some interesting uh, changes on that. I mean, ultimately, I guess you only need one person for the property, a one tenant for the property, whether it's a flat house or room, quite honestly. And I guess if there's fewer people to choose from, it makes the selection process better as long as those people fit the criteria. Um, do you think that um, there's going to be marketing around properties that suggest a guide price? Will it be advertised more as a guide price? Or do you think it can be, do you think people will start to advertise it, say, from 800 to 900, a bit like they do in auction properties? Very possibly, and we won't know until it's actually published, but my personal view is I don't think we will. I think that if you start to add in an element of variation or you add some variables in, that, that doesn't really help the tenant because I think the, the, if you think about the rationale behind why they would want to introduce this, to my mind, there's two main reasons. One is so that the customers or tenants understand what the price is that they're paying. Because even in our world, when we have people to come for viewing, we say, well, the price is, take that room, 790. Is broadband included in that? Is, are utilities included in that? So that says to me that some other agents and or landlords are, are putting a price out there and then they're adding bits and pieces on top. And is that included in the description? Because we talk about managing properties. There's 173 pieces of legislation in managing a property. One of those pieces of legislation is advertising standards. So the advertising standard in regards to properties, you have to have certain things listed in order to make that listing compliant with advertising standards. Uh, one of them is you have to put the EPC rating on. Um, and the second one is around about listing what the price that the tenant is actually ultimately going to pay. It's a bit like if you go and buy a car, you see the, the, the base price and they say, oh, you want a radio? That's another 1,500 quid. You want seats? That's another 200 quid. <laughs> you want an engine? Yeah. You get my point. So it's about adding things on. And I think the, the motivation behind this is to make things simpler for renters so that they know if the property is listed at 900 quid for example that's the price that they're going to pay yeah. and that there's no hidden additional fees on top i think generally in, certainly in my view in my experience i don't really see this affecting us in any way i think we put it out there at a fair market price we don't really get bidding wars in our area but i do understand what you're saying about the london region being higher demand 
there is a, a way to choose a tenant which could be the fact that somebody wants to pay more for it. I, I understand that that probably goes on, uh, but it certainly doesn't go on in my area. I'm not sure about yours. I was thinking the same. My experience of marketing a property to let, you, you might test the market maybe a little bit. And I think with the new legislation, that probably is still allowed for. You could still test the market to see if you could get another £25 a month or something. And if it's you know, two or three weeks worth of marketing and there's no mm. takers, then you've got the option to bring it down. Mm. People that were inclined to do that last year will still be able to do that next year. And I don't think that's particularly unethical. I think that's, that's fine. Mm. For me, if I marketed a property at, let's just say, £800 a month or something, and I had a lot of interest in that, and the, you know, there were like 50 viewings in a week and inundated with offers, I don't think I've ever then said, well, let's go to sealed bids or a bidding war or something. I think I've always then said, okay, great. Who can move in quickly? What's the best if you like quality tenants or what's the best applicant Who's got the best so criteria? are you looking at affordability income I, I don't want the property to be empty for any longer than necessary so if someone can move in next week that's a big plus for me they're the things that i start looking for and i would rent it at, at 800 in that example yeah it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to be policed because i can't think of a way that that the authorities uh, will be able to police this because you could have a number of different scenarios. So if I was a London agent, I'm not, but if I was, and I was doing this um, sort of price bidding, what I could potentially do, depending on what the legislation actually says, is that I could list a property for £1,000, and suddenly I get a whole bunch of interest. So let's just say 100 people rock up and that they're interested. Well, what's stopping me from terminating that listing leaving it a few days and then relisting it at 1200 quid and now i haven't got 100 but i've got 50 people so now i've still got a good number of people to choose from so why don't i terminate that listing leave it a few days and advertise it at 1700 in which case i might get four that's a more manageable number so it's not openly bidding but it's testing 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 and then taking someone so unless there is some form of policing or some form of uh, restrictions that's going to allow one as a letting agent to do that it's going to be really difficult to prove because the market price is a market price yeah. and unfortunately and we won't get political here but there are a number of things that's happening that's restricting the supply of housing and that's the real issue that the government is putting out policies that's making landlords stop and think and that's having a detrimental effect on supply. And when you look at price, price is a function of supply and demand. If there's massive demand, which we know that there is, and there's limited supply, price is only, only gonna go one way. And unfortunately, the only way to cap that is rent caps. And we don't even wanna talk about rent caps. And they're not in the renters' rights bill. No, they're not talking about. Labor, has, uh, Labor did a, um, a paper prior to the election that basically said that rent caps are the way to go. But the powers that be in the Labour government have said that that's not something that we want to do. And when you look at how rent caps have been introduced in places like Ireland, uh, I think also in Germany, and my wife's German, so we know a little bit about that, it's always failed. It's always had and the Scotland opposite effect. And is... Scotland as well, yeah, for sure. It's, it's always had a detrimental effect and they've ended up taking it away. But maybe us as English need to go through that pain. Who knows? Hopefully not. Well, on that bombshell, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. That's, uh, we, we very much hope that you found that insightful and that we look forward to catching up with you again uh, when we chat further with Steve uh, about the new renters' rights bill. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.